Greetings, we'll cover a few details about, Richard Trevithick and his life in a succinct manner. Here is a short rundown of his early years, education, career, persona, accolades, notable works, legacy, and demise. British mining engineer and inventor, Richard Trevithick. Trevithick, a mining captain's son, who was raised in Cornwall's mining region, was exposed to mining and engineering, from a young age. His most important accomplishments, were the creation of the first high-pressure steam engine, and the first operational railway, steam locomotive. He was an early pioneer of steam-powered road, and rail travel. On February 21, 1804, a train pulled by Trevithick's unidentified, steam engine traveled down, the tramway of the Penadaran Ironworks in Merthyr Tydfil, Wales, making it the first locomotive-hauled railway, journey in history. Also known as, Richard Trevithick, famous as, British inventor, pioneer of steam-powered road and rail transport, born, April 13, 1771, Tregajoran, United Kingdom, died, April 22, 1833, Dartford, United Kingdom. Father, Richard Trevithick, mother, Antigue, spouse, Jane Harvey, children, Francis Trevithick, Elizabeth Banfield, and Ellis. Discoveries, inventions, steam locomotive, height, 1.88 meter. The mining captain, Richard Trevithick and his wife and Teague, a miner's daughter, welcomed their first child, Richard Trevithick, on April 13, 1771 in Tregajoran, Cornwall. He was his parents' sole son and the fifth of their, six children. He went to the local school in Camborne, but he preferred sports to academics, with the exception of math, where he could come up with creative ways, to arrive at the right answers. Richard Trevithick had no interest in academics, yet he astounded educated engineers, with his outstanding problem-solving abilities, landing his first employment, at the East Stray Park Mine, at the age of 19. He was able to advance quickly, to the position of consulting engineer, thanks to his enthusiasm. To replace the widely utilized, incredibly big, low-pressure engines created, by Thomas Newcomen in 1712, he became interested in testing, high-pressure steam engines. He asked William Murdoch, who had created a model steam vehicle, ten years earlier, and had also lived next door to him, between 1797 and 1798, to give him a demonstration in 1794. He started working as an engineer, at the Ding Dong Mine in 1797, and to avoid paying royalties, he built a modified version of the low-pressure engine. This allowed him to start designing high-pressure steam engines. Nevertheless, an injunction to stop his trials was placed on him by James Watt and Matthew Bolton, who had patented the model to increase its efficacy. He built 30 full-scale, high-pressure engines in 1797 to extract ore from Cornish mines. They were so small, commonly known as the puffer fancies, that they could be transported to the mines on regular farm wagons. He then concentrated on creating a powerful steam engine for trains. In 1801, he constructed a steam engine that he called the Puffing Devil. On Christmas Eve of that year, he made a brief successful trip to show off its capabilities, bringing six passengers up Camborne Hill. This trip is regarded as the first instance of steam-powered transportation. He constructed a stationary engine in Shropshire's Colebrookdale Company's workshop in 1802, which ran at a record-breaking 40 piston strokes per minute and had a boiler pressure of 145 psi in order to patent his high-pressure steam engine. Although little is known about the rail locomotive that the business is said to have manufactured for him. He created the London Steam Carriage in 1803, another steam-powered, road vehicle. He added an additional safety valve, to subsequent designs after one of his stationary engines, at Greenwich Burst, killing four men. This incident was fully exploited, by his rivals Watt and Bolton. Trevithick, designed a high-pressure steam engine, for Samuel Homfray of the Penwideran, ironworks in Merthyr Tydfil, who bet that, the engine could transport 10 tons of iron, 
for 10 miles in 1803. On February 21, 1804, the engine made a world record, by successfully transporting 10 tons of iron, 5 wagons, and 70 workers down, the Merthyr Tydfil tramroad, from Penaderen to Abersinan. Christopher Blackett, the owner of the Wylam Colliery, in Newcastle, approached him in 1804, asking for a design for a locomotive, but his creation was too heavy, for Blackett's wooden tramway tracks. He constructed, the, Catch Me Who Can, on a circular track in 1808, to demonstrate speedier rail travel, but it had poor tracks and charged spectators, one shilling to ride. He quit developing railroad locomotives after seeing, that there was no public interest in his locomotive ideas and turned his attention, to other engineering endeavors. For the Thames Archway Company, he was already working on a tunnel, under the Thames, and although the project was abandoned due to floods, two colliery engineers applauded his work. He built the nautical laborer in 1808, in conjunction with Robert Dickinson, but it did not adhere, to the docks fire standards. Additionally, he established a small business, at Limehouse to produce iron tanks, which would eventually be used, to raise shipwrecks in lieu of wooden casks used, for storing in ships. In 1812, he created, the, Cornish Boiler, which, when used in the Bolton and Watt pumping engines, at Dalcoth, doubled output. He erected, one of the most effective experimental condensing steam engines, with, high pressure, at Will Prosper, that same year, and then he put a non-condensing engine, in a threshing machine on a farm near Probus, Cornwall. In 1811, Francisco Yuval used one of his high-pressure engines, to effectively drain water, from the rich silver mines of Cerro de Pasco in Peru, at a height of 4,330 meters. He later traveled to Peru, but was repulsed by Yuval's behavior, there and started working independently, as a mining methods consultant. The government gave him mining rights, but he was only able to create a copper and silver mine, at Caxatambo, because of a lack of funding. In 1822, he made his second foray into Costa Rica with plans, to build a mining operation and a steam-powered railway. However, after a harrowing journey, he came home with the aid of Robert Stevenson. Jane Harvey, a famous blacksmith, John Harvey's daughter, was married to Richard Trevithick, in 1797. Richard, Anne, Elizabeth, John Harvey, Francis, and Frederick Henry were, their six children together. One of the first high-pressure steam engines, was created by Richard Trevithick, who was also the first to construct a full-scale, operational steam locomotive. On February 21, 1804, he successfully ran the first, locomotive-hauled railroad journey, along the tramway of the Penaderen, ironworks in Merthyr Tydfil, Wales. The Levant winding engine, was saved from being dismantled, by the establishment of industrial archaeology organizations, and the Trevithick Society was named, in Richard Trevithick's honor. On Cornish engines, the mining industry, engineers, and other industrial archaeology issues, they produce a newsletter, a journal, and numerous publications. In Merthyr Tydfil, a street is also named, in his honor. On the final Saturday, in April each year, Camborne, Cornwall, observes Trevithick Day in honor of, Richard Trevithick. On this day, steam engines from all over the UK, participate in a community event. They march through, Camborne streets at the end of the day, and pass a statue of Richard Trevithick, outside the Passmore Edwards building. In the alternate history, short story, The Iron Elephant, by Harry Turtledove, Richard Trevithick invents his steam engine in 1782, and races a mammoth-drawn train, that it would eventually replace. This character, along with station master, George Stevenson, was born before 1771, and is American rather than British, indicating that he is an analog, a common turtledove plot technique, rather than, the historical figure. About a year after, starting his job in Dartford, Trevithick became ill with pneumonia, and was forced to go to bed, at the Bull Hotel, where he was staying at the time. He spent a week confined, to bed before passing away, on April 22, 1833, in the morning. 
He had little money and no one had ever visited him, at his bedside during, his illness. His co-workers, at Hall's place of business organized a collection, for his funeral costs and served as bearers. As grave robbery was a typical occurrence at the period, they also engaged a night watchman, to watch over his grave. Trevithick was laid to rest, at St. Edmund's burial ground in East Hill, Dartford, in an unmarked grave. The cemetery was, shut down in 1857, and the gravestones were taken down, in 1956 to 1957. The approximate location of the grave is marked, with a plaque. The plaque is located, on the park side, next to the East Hill Gate, and a separate route.